Greetings to you from GLC Online. I'm glad you're here joining in worship on this last Sunday here in August. Hard to believe we're turning the page to the fall. Uh, but today we have a special message as we continue this theme of cruzando or crossover in our journey with Jesus, really dialing into who he is and how he calls each of us to live. And I pray you'll be blessed by the message today. But as we prepare for worship, again, uh, you can go to our Facebook page, our website. There's welcome cards. There's a prayer page. Uh, you can send us a note. Of course, on this video, you can like and send us a message as well. There's ways to give. There's ways to be the church. There is all kinds of information posted for upcoming events. We pray all of it that it would be a blessing in your life, in your neighborhood's life. And so bring friends and bring people to being the church, God's church, uh, together. Well, now as we begin today, I want us to start out with this video. And I pray that as you watch it, it reminds you of your identity in Christ. What is the church? The church is the people of God, powered by the Spirit of God, guided by the Word of God, working for the glory of God. This is the church. The church is not just a place. The church is the people. The church is not just a monument. It's a movement. The church is not just a building. It's a body. The church is not just an accessory, it's a necessity. This is the church. The Bible says the church is the hope of the world, the salt of the earth, and the city on a hill. The church is the family of God, the body of Christ, and light in the darkness. The church is God's plan A, and there is no plan B. The church is where all kinds of people from all kinds of places, come together to forsake their sins and to worship their Savior. Where chains are broken and broken hearts are put back together, where prodigals come home and captives are set free, this is the church. Where blind eyes are opened and good news is preached, where the low are lifted up and the proud are brought low, where the lost are found and the helpless find help, where brothers and sisters can find love and acceptance from each other and from their Father in heaven, this is the church. Where the disciples of Jesus are built up in their most holy faith. The church is where the gospel is. The church is where grace is. The church is where God is. The church is you. The church is me. The church is all of us. This is the church. Yes, this is the church. We are God's church together. Well, for the readings today, the first one comes from Psalm chapter 18, verse 2. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer, my God, my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield, and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. And from Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. Those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. And our final reading from Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 20. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day, and having done everything, to stand firm. 
Stand therefore and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. These are the words of the Lord and words of life. All thanks and praise be to God. Well, again, we look at the words that Jesus gives to us, the words that God has given to us in the scripture, and we are reminded of that presence of God no matter where we are. And for this theme today, we look in particular at that theme of crossing over with traveling with Jesus into the unknown. And if we're really honest and kind of bare our soul a little bit, we would admit that most of our life is traveling into the unknown. Yeah, we might be planners and, and people who like to execute, control freaks who put things together, um, all of those kinds of things. But the reality, reality is, is each day, uh, each moment, anything can happen. Anything can come our way. And so it's in those moments of traveling into the unknown that we must keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. And that will renew our minds and renew our souls and help us to see and hear anew in good ways. Because I think Jesus does want to nudge us, uh, to move us beyond where our mental frames and mental maps are so that we can experience that full life. So part of this life is to be an adventure, to go out and to explore the unknown, to ask questions that other people aren't asking, uh, to dive into the deep end of things, uh, to make considerations or to make room for things that maybe, maybe others have missed, to not, again, limit God so much with prescribed ways of being, but to allow God to continue to move and, and to have God's way here in the world, shaping and renewing and transforming the face of the earth. You know, most of us don't really know where we're going until we get there. And then we arrive to something and we start to figure it out and then we must move forward and adventure anew again. But we don't adventure uh, aimlessly. As God's people, we are called to adventure with a purpose, to know that Jesus and God are with us and for us. And that is why I think Paul, in the book of Ephesians there, a bit of genius, a stroke of genius in his writing, is he, he uses this Roman imagery of the armor of God, and he applies this to this fledgling beginning church movement, this, this house church, these people who had given their lives to following Jesus. And his instruction was to put on the full armor of God. Well, I read about all of those pieces of armor, which would have hit the hearers of the day uh, right with what they were aware of and to say, yes, yes, we are a new human being in Christ. We are a new human humanity. We are a new creation. And so as we live into that, how will we clothe, outfit ourselves, uh, live our faith anew or differently than what we've seen? And I can't teach about all the parts of the armor. We'd be here way too long. But I do want to focus on putting on the shoes that bring about the gospel of peace. I think that's an important message that Paul was hoping the people would always have as witness to Jesus in their life. So put on those shoes. Put on the clothing upon your feet that help you to be a messenger of peace. Well, I match that together with the Beatitudes. And when I say the Beatitudes, what comes to mind? Remember, it's those words of Jesus, Sermon on the Mount. Again, teaching and professing to the way to live and the way that God would be with people in the world. 
He said the poor in spirit will be blessed for they are in the kingdom of God. Those who mourn, they will be comforted. The gentle shall inherit the earth. Those who hunger and thirst for righteousness will be satisfied. The merciful will receive mercy and the pure in heart will see God. All of those wonderful affirmations, again, of God's work in their life. But then the last one that he said in that lineup of things is, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Well, did you catch it? In the previous verses, people are blessed to receive something for who they are or for what they do, uh, what condition they're living in. Only in verse 9 are people identified with someone, namely Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. In other words, we are never more closely aligned to the purpose and the mission and the person and the message of Christ than we are when seeking to advance peace. I'm going to say that again because I want you to walk around with it. In other words, we are never more closely aligned to the per person, the purpose, the mission, and the message of Christ than when we are seeking to advance the gospel of peace. Wow. That is a large part of our story and what we are to give our lives to. You know, Jesus showed us how to effectively advance peace. He talked about it in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 13 and 14. He said, be like salt uh, uh, to be seasoned into life, tasteful, not tasteless, to make sure that you're impacting lives. And how are we doing that? Bringing about peace. Also in chapter 5, verse 16, he said, Be like light, not hidden, but seen via your good works. And folks, we as Lutheran Christians may know that uh, God doesn't necessarily need our good works. Jesus doesn't necessarily need our good works. But you know who does is our neighbor needs our good works. This world needs our good works because it's like salt and light that's bringing hope and light and love and, and joy to this world. So let's look at some examples of peacemakers. Throughout the scripture, they are there. We can talk about Abram and his story from Genesis 13 and in his conflict or in his competition with Lot and how eventually they came to that realization, you know, there is enough for everyone. There's enough land, there's enough space so we can take up residence in these places and we can bless each other as we're doing it. There's no need to fight or to have a throwdown about every single thing. We're gonna practice neighbor love and say we can do this life together. Setting aside his afforded rights there for the personal concern of the greater good, that is a really important concept of peacemaking. And so how can we be blessings or how can blessings that flow through us help solve problems? And how can problems lead to good possibility, right? That things don't always have to stay the same way, but by rolling up our shirt sleeves and working together, we can work toward human good. Another example of a peacemaker is Esther in uh, chapter 8 of, of that book, where she leveraged her position and her privilege, and she risked her life to save her people. She was active versus passive. She spoke a word of truth. She invited the king for another consideration. And guess what? The mind was changed. The heart was changed, and people were saved. But somebody had to take the risk. Somebody had to step out but she did it in a way that brought about more peace. Another example, of course, is the Apostle Paul himself. When he wrote in Galatians 3, there is no longer Jew or Greek. There's no longer slave or free. There's no longer male or female for all are one in Christ Jesus. Why did he teach that? Because he saw that one new humanity of one being formed together into the body of Christ, a seat at the table for all, that there with voices shared and listened to and heard amongst each other, that there could be peace among people. No longer a dividing wall, but one in Christ. So then how to be a peacemaker? We have other examples of that, not just people who work for it, but other examples. How about Solomon in Proverbs 15 verse 1? He diffused the anger that was building amongst the people, and he said you do that with a gentle reply. 
You figure out a way to speak, to offer a word of hope or healing, to move people forward. Paul in Ephesians 4, like we heard from today, you speak the truth in love. You speak the truth in love. You, you practice honesty and vulnerability. And again, putting yourself amongst the people and uh, alongside the people so that love can be grown. But you got to speak the truth to each other. And then James, in his book, James 1.19, he said, be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Yes, quick to listen, to open the ears and slow to offer that word and slow to anger because those things will not add to life. They'll only diminish life. And so working on the greater good. And so how about for us? These are examples. And again, we can read our Bibles and we can point to it, but how can we too be a peacemaker? Maybe even more practical things for you to consider. We can develop authentic relationships. I think that's what we see in Jesus. He put on those shoes of peace as he engaged down at the Sea of Galilee, as he called the disciples, as he told people to, uh, without sin, to cast the first stone, and they all dropped their stones because they couldn't continue in that destructive way. He worked on creating a human family, developing authenticity in a shared story. I think we can do that. I think to be a peacemaker, we can be more community-centered versus me, myself, and I. Instead of turning inward, we can turn outward and we can ask the greater good kinds of questions. Where when one suffers, we all suffer, but when one thrives, we all thrive. Again, we're walking together. I think we can practice human kindness and empathy, knowing and, and listening to the voice of the stranger the one outside our circle of connection. What are they thinking? What are they feeling? What are they going through? And compassion and kindness and empathy goes a long ways in forming a people who, who, who love. We can give respect and dignity to one another. I think Jesus practiced this all the time. Again, when people were in need of healing, he, he really entered into that, how can I help? What can be done? But he also pointed to God. How can God be glorified in this situation? How can people see that God is here with them and for them? The way that it's done is giving dignity and respect to one another. Jesus, along with the others in scriptures, built trust and mutual support as they worked on common care, a common upbuilding of the society in which they lived. Of course, they practiced active listening, ears wide open. They offered help and were drawn into places where that help was most needed. And again, they worked to resolve conflict. Having a crucial conversation, going the extra mile and making sure that that this conflict doesn't sit on the stove and continue to brew and, and conquer and divide, but instead build and bless, using conflict for good instead of evil. These are just some examples. What would you add to the list? How would you see peace being built up? How has God done that in your life? What are some stories that you could share with a neighbor and friend that say, hey, hey, a lot of times it doesn't work, but here's times that it has, and here's the difference that it made, and and yes, I have that armor of God on. I'm going to enter into these places. And I'm going to work toward being a peacemaker. Peace is traveling into the unknown. I want to be really honest. The world doesn't really know peace or do peace real well. But here we're invited as God's people to be on the adventure with Jesus, to cross over into the unknown and work toward peace. You know, in Isaiah 52, 7, it says, How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim what? Peace. Who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. Yes, you will and you work for it. You bring peace because you're pointing to God, the God of peace, the God of Jesus. And Paul quoted that same scripture all the way from Isaiah in his own words in that book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 15, when he wrote, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring 
good news, good news, good news of great joy. Jesus is here. God is here. And so blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. You, dear church, are called to be those people, those peacemakers, outfitted by God himself with that full armor to do the work of God in the world. Know that you go not alone, but God goes with you. Yes, may we experience full life as peacemakers of God in our world. And God's people say, Amen. doesn't love the Alleluia Chorus. I pray you're sent out with Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia in your heart. Well, let us now pray our Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Go forth now, crossing over with Jesus into full life. Go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All thanks and praise be to God. Amen. See you next week, church.